In this video, I talk about Ethan Imwaneri as he has signed his first professional contract with Arsenal. And I also talk about some striker news, in particular Osman and Tony, as it looks like, you know, their move to Arsenal is pretty unlikely. I also touch on some other strikers as well, and also some news around A.A. Yeah, Usman Diamande, as there's been a lot around him in the past few days. So starting off with the news about Ethan Imwaneri, and you can see here, Arsenal Academy confirming that Ethan Imwaneri has signed his first professional contract at the club. We all know he was staying all this time, but obviously that was just this airbird contract before where I believe he was only 16 so he couldn't have a professional one but now that he's 17 I think he's 17 anyway you know that's when you can send up a professional contract and he's done so and huge congratulations to him we all know the talent you know we potentially have on our hands here you saw all the clubs interested in the player the likes of Chelsea Manchester City and I'm sure loads of other Premier League clubs really wanted the player because you know he was out of contract and his future at Arsenal was uncertain at one point but he was the one who really pushed to stay he really wanted to stay and he can obviously see you know a little pathway into the first team eventually and it's just so nice to have an academy player you know stay at the club at this moment in time you know lots of people talk about academy and when are we going to maybe integrate it into the first team because we don't do that often but I think the main people you know you have your eyes on when you're in the title race you can't really integrate loads of people but you know the likes of N1 Airy, maybe even Lewis Skelly and some other guys they, they look like the real deal to me and Ethan N1 Airy, I can see him playing a significant part of the season uh, next year I should say you know not this year because there's not much left but next year I can see him you know playing some FA Cup games, even starting a few Premier League late, uh, games. You've seen the likes of maybe Kobe Maney for Manchester United, maybe uh, Ethan M. Wanneri can do something like that for us. But first of all, it's just so nice to see him stay at Arsenal. You know, he we all knew he was going to stay at Arsenal for a long time, but now it's confirmed, you know, he's signed his first professional contract. And you can see here what he said. He said that I'm delighted to have finally got to the stage after all the hard work over many years. It's a proud moment for me and my family to finally be here, so I'm happy and ready to keep working. It was the dream to get to this stage. I've always started about uh, when this day would come and I've been looking forward to it so I'm happy it's finally here. I didn't have to think about it this is my family and it feels like home here everyone's like a family together and they care about everyone and it feels so special to be here uh, to me here sorry. So first of all on the family thing loads of players have already said that, that it's like a family here you know the vibes at the club seem so happy and that's all you know mainly down to Mikel Arteta. He says he didn't really have to think about it which you know that's what we really heard of. Maybe some family members were who were influenced by money that's just some rumours going about but it looks like Ethan in one area was always set on you know always wanting to stay at the club and it's a dream for him to be here and I'm sure we'll be seeing him in an Arsenal shirt if he doesn't succeed at the club we'll be very surprised but you know in these careers you can't really predict any of these stuff and this is interesting he was talking about his aims in the future and said that I want to keep pushing towards the first team gain as much experience as I can from the players in the first team as well he wants to score as many goals as he can in whatever game he's obviously playing in and just keep pushing and he's going to keep working and do his best when he gets any opportunities so you can see you know that was obviously his aim he wants to you know do well for the academy boys but you know mainly the first team that's his dream and we obviously know last season he got his obviously game against Brentford as a 15 year old and you know we haven't seen him for a long time and people are thinking you know was that just a PR stunt what's going on here and in the games like such as 6-0 Lens you know when we beat them at home in the Champions League and PSV away when that game didn't really mean much he didn't get any game time and people were very disappointed and I do get why but when we beat West Ham 6-0 Ethan Imwaneri did come on and to be honest in his little cameo he did look pretty decent a couple of times where maybe he could have had a shot but didn't probably out of you know maybe nerves and not wanting to be a bit greedy on his debut which you do get so he has got a couple of little minutes in Premier League you know not played too much and I don't think he will be playing much for the rest of the season so if you are expecting that I wouldn't really personally however next season I am excited to see Ethan Imwaneri I would expect him to be on the uh, to be on the preseason tour hopefully we see more of him in America when Arsenal go but obviously in the Premier League maybe even some Cowboy Cup minutes FA Cup minutes hopefully we get far and you know if we are in the Champions League and obviously Premier League I imagine he'll you know get off the bench more and play more minutes he is only 17 maybe 18 now I'm not 100% sure so you know you can't expect him to be absolutely amazing when he steps on the pitch I think that would be you know very unrealistic you'll be able to see his talent and you know I think everybody believes in him you can see Arteta really really rates him the whole club rate him and you know everybody really believes he'll succeed at the club and I'm really hopeful too but again you know this season it's not really relevant as you you know I don't really think we'll be seeing him too much especially if we have a you know fully fit squad but next season in my opinion I think we'll see more of him and he will be an Arsenal player in the future in my opinion and I can't wait to see what this guy you know is going to offer the club you know in the future years and let's hope you know he stays as long as possible and has a brilliant career with us but you know Ethan Imwaneri has signed his first professional contract at Arsenal usually I do you know a separate video for these contract videos but it's just an academy player so you know I didn't think I'd do it too much maybe you know next time if he's a you know if, uh, actual first team player and you know playing a lot of minutes first then I'll do it but obviously just wanted to touch on this very slightly as it's 
it's just, just an academy player that's not really relevant right now but for the future and potentially even you know a year's time he could be absolutely massive for us so Ethan Imwaneri you know congrats to him and he will be staying at the club as he signed his first professional contract moving on to some transfer news and again David Ornstein we all know David Ornstein you know arguably the best transfer journalist him and Rolf Abrizio Romano in my opinion and he was doing a QA and a with the Athletic and on the Arsenal section he was asked about Arsenal's potential striker targets for the summer and he says the likes of Benjamin Shesko and obviously Victor Jokerez are well thought of even Ferguson is well from Brighton but obviously the uh, price Brighton would won and this season so far makes him you know probably less likely which you know I think we all suspected but the main part he adds here is that I don't see it being a Victor Osman or Ivan Tony. there will be other options too he also says more here uh, at the bottom that don't forget Arsenal have other positions to consider as well a midfielder a backup to the wide attackers possibly left back replacement goalkeeper as well if Ramsdale leaves much will be determined by finances and therefore what they will manage to raise through departures is sure to have a significant impact on what they're able to spend as well so I've talked about that obviously departures you know maybe if we sell in Kitty or Smith Rowe or Reece Nelson Ramsdale some guys like this maybe we can spend more and it's not just a striker you know Arsenal want another defender you know another goalkeeper I imagine back up to Raya and obviously our you know striker I just mentioned and obviously midfielder so I have to wait and see on that but the main part is obviously I think we all knew that is that you know Sesko and Jokerez Arsenal do like them but apparently Osserman and Tony is unlikely according to David Ornstein that's basically what he's saying which is very very interesting Tony we don't know how much he would have cost and he was looking a little bit unlikely anyway you know because I've you know his form for Brentford he started off very well but fell off a little bit and maybe his age as well and I don't know how much he'd cost but Victor Osserman 100 million release clause apparently that's pretty unlikely he doesn't personally see it I mean I don't know if that's maybe a personal opinion maybe or if he's actual facts but he says he doesn't see it being a Victor Osserman so I guess you have to take that quite seriously so if you are expecting a Victor Osserman or Ivan Tony then maybe you have to you know damper your expectations a little bit and maybe settle for another striker and me personally I would ab absolutely love Victor Osserman he was my personal you know number one target but if we don't get him I do understand it when you want to buy a defender a midfielder can you really uh, you know afford to spend 100 million on a striker who hasn't really done it in the Premier League and he does obviously have his downsides as well I'm pretty sure everybody's watched him he does have you know some brilliant attributes but also isn't the perfect striker that doesn't really exist so maybe Arsenal would like to go maybe for a 40 to 50 million striker maybe even 60 70 such as uh, you know Benjamin Sesko or Victor Yoko is Sesko obviously has like a 40 million release clause something like that so you know it's pretty straightforward if Sesko wants to come and also Victor Yoko is he has a 100 million euro release clause so kind of the same as Victor Yo uh, Osterman but I you know I don't think anybody really thinks anybody's going to pay that and I do think if he does leave it will be around 60 maybe 70 million so maybe Arsenal want to spend around 40 to 60 million on a striker so they can go over other positions because what would you rather would you rather Arsenal spend 100 million on a striker and maybe just get cheap you know little upgrades here and there or would you like the money to be you know evenly distributed across the whole team maybe you know a 40 to 50 million striker with 50 million midfielder maybe a 40 to 50 million winger or defender that would probably be uh, seem more sensible in my opinion so although it is a bit unfortunate that you know we can't get either one of these two because they are top quality strikers my personal opinion I would you know rather have their uh, Victor Osserman but listen if we can't get him it is what it is Chesco or Victor Jokerez looks like they are probably the likely options some people have even suggested do we even need a you know Victor Osman because Kai Havertz has done a you know a very good job there we have Leandro Trossard we have you know uh, Gabriel Jesus as well and if you do buy a young striker like a Victor Jokerez or Chesco then say if they don't perform straight away you don't have to keep relying on them you can maybe put them on the bench for a bit because they're still very young and stick a Kai Havertz up there or Jesus and maybe that pressure dampens a little bit on them and you know they can you know chill and you know because they're still young strikers if you expect them to bang straight away that might be a little bit unlikely so maybe that would make sense maybe having a Havertz up front you know he's done very well for us at Jesus we have options up there so is a number nine really that important it's a very interesting conversation to have loads of people are going to have various opinions people are going to see uh, be like you know we need a striker no matter what it's very important some will say no we need a midfielder or even a winger would be better you know a different type of winger would be nice for you know as backup to Martinelli and Saka and maybe they won't be too bothered about the striker position so you know loads of people have various options about this but it looks like Victor Osman and Avin Tony are going to be unlikely probably for different reasons and maybe a younger type of striker like Shesko Jokerez probably not Ferguson because he's going to cost a lot like uh, obviously Osman but you know for uh, Shesko or Jokerez looks like they're more likely so very very interesting story there I have to wait and see what happens in the summer anything can change of course maybe if we raise enough funds we can go after an Osman and still invest heavily elsewhere but lots to find out until the summer but as of now it looks like the big strikers are unavailable well not unavailable but maybe a little bit unlikely at the moment and Arsenal might go for a younger type so I have to wait and see what happens in the summer and if there's any changes throughout and finally 
final bit of news, I wanted to touch on Usman Diamande. I have obviously been talking about this guy for the past few days. Apparently, you know, stuff on record Portugal saying that Arsenal may make an offer. And for Fabrizio Man, I was talking about this and said that I think this story is coming out because Arsenal sent their scouts to regularly follow players in Portugal, like your career, who's one of the players they've been following for a long time. However, on Diamande, I'm not aware of any talks or negotiations at the moment, but there are really many clubs interested, so we're absolutely far away from a solution or negotiation or anything close or concrete yet. So basically, he's kind of downplaying it, saying that Arsenal sent scouts to watch the likes of Diamande as well, and obviously Victor Jokerez. So he doesn't deny the interest, and I'm sure the interest is there, but he says that there's been no talks, no negotiations, nothing as close whatsoever. So basically downplaying it. I mean, as I said, I really do like yeah, Diamande. Looks like he could be a very, you know, nice rotation centre-back, but the problem is the price. Are you willing to pay maybe 60 to 80 million euros for somebody who doesn't even guarantee to start when, you know, I just talked about you need a midfielder, a winger, maybe even a striker? So I have to wait and see. It'll be a very interesting one. Again, he's a young, talented centre-back, and I wouldn't be surprised if he does go elsewhere this summer. Will it be Arsenal, though? Maybe a little bit unlikely, but I have to wait and see, because Arsenal apparently rate him highly, and I don't think that's, you know, false. But nothing is close. for Fabrizio Mano saying that, you know, they're not even negotiating or talking, never mind anything being close. So, you know, if you're talking about, you know, uh, Diamande being close to Arsenal, or uh, maybe we're preparing an offer, it does look like those kind of stories are a little bit false at the moment. Again, as the, you know, summer comes along, maybe these stories can ramp up a little bit, and maybe this could be true. But at this moment in time, take any news with a bit, a bit of a pinch of salt. As I talked about the other day, you know, it was record Portugal, it can be okay, but again, you know, until the big journalists say it, you want to, you know, not to uh, take it too seriously. But at this moment in time, looks like Arsenal do like Diamande, but nothing is happening at this moment in time, and any talks or negotiations simply aren't happening at the moment. But that's it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you let me know all your thoughts in the comment section below. What are your thoughts on the striker news, first of all? You know, what are your thoughts on the striker situation would you like to see Arsenal go after one of these two or maybe you think no we can go after a cheaper striker or do you think we need one at all what are your thoughts on the Diamande news would you like to see Arsenal go after him or not and also the news about Ethan in one area I'm sure everybody's absolutely buzzing about this and you know how would you know how much do you think he'll play for us next season do you think he'll play a lot and do you think you know he'll be integrated as well make sure you watch out for the future videos obviously you know watch out for the team news and printed the lineups for the Manchester City game we've got a massive game this weekend and of course speaking of that uh, make sure you obviously check out that match preview did that earlier on check that out if you've already seen it talked about the massive game you know for you know lots of talk to, uh, talk about because it's a big game in the title race also talked about the international roundup check that out as well we talked about the Arsenal players on international duty and also the daily Arsenal news video as well about you know uh, more about Diamante and Gutierrez so lots of check out make sure you check out all those videos as well uh, but yeah as for this one uh, leave a like on it if you've enjoyed it subscribe to the channel if you're new thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one